So uh, Fred Bright is a biomedical research scientist and currently resides in Switzerland. He's a recipient of several prestigious academic fellowships as, at different levels. A fellowship, a few include Talo International Scholars, UK, Yale School of Medicine Postgraduate Scholarship, USA, the Swiss Excellent Scholarship. As a youth coach, he is passionate about the youth acquiring skills to sharpen and maximize their potential in life. He is um, he has two adorable daughters with his wife, Bernice. So without much ado, let us receive uh, Mr. Frederick Bright to give us the next presentation. Great, great. Um, thank you so much um, for this opportunity. Um, wherever you are, in the on, in this part of our continent, um, it's either morning, afternoon, evening. Um, we want to thank you for um, the fact that you you've made some time to to participate in this year's Global Idea Summit, and this is a, a really great platform that I I believe that a lot of people should be given the opportunity and. Um, the, the time to be able to access and benefit from the uh, numerous um, activities that, that are, um, you know, circulated on, on this platform. And I uh, really, really appreciate the founder of Achievers Tribe, uh, Dr. Charles Ephron Benjamin. He laid a really good um, foundation in the first session. Uh, a few of the comments intersect and, uh, you know, throws more light on what, what I'll be sharing with you. And I hope that we are going to enjoy this session. So this morning, um, my goal is to inspire you to want to pursue your education to the next level. Um, I've spoken on a number of platforms and, and that's one of my, my passions to always encourage the youth or people wherever they find themselves to uh, push the limits uh, not just, you know, be contained in a box or um, they think they are engaged in a job or a career and they don't want to, and, and that's it, right? You are just in a, a job that pays you a monthly salary and that's it. I think that in this time, you, you need to add value to yourself. And one of the main ways is to be able to um, seek further education. So in, in this um presentation as i can see from the first session there would be a lot of uh, questions so i will try and be snappy uh, it is more information now i will try and, and run through it as quickly as i can so that we can have uh, more time to interact with the question and answers so my my um, the initial part of this um talk would just be to prepare your mind and know the rationale why you need to pursue your education to the next level and how why you need to push the boundaries um, of your education and then we'll go ahead to look at some uh, helpful resources that we can you know uh, we can explore information regarding some scholarships and stuff uh, that we would need Okay, so I've said that in this dispensation, one sure way to gain advantage is to seek knowledge through education. And it's, it's very key um, that <laughs> people say that, why do you wanna go to school all your life? Um, people have a uh, believe, you know, in a certain mindset that, you know, you just get your, high school certificate and it's enough to make you a living. People think, okay, it's enough to just have a, a college degree and, and that's it, right? But I think that education is, is well, could, could be, could go beyond the normal, uh, beyond the walls of a classroom. But you, you, the aim is that you need to seek constant knowledge, right? 
through every activity that you participate in. And I'm saying that uh, the reason why people are unable to pursue their desired education, there are multiple reasons, and I've just listed a few here. Number one, basically, is a lack of funds. People are not able to pursue their university degrees because of a lack of funds. And unfortunately, in this part of our, our continent, or in Africa or Ghana, uh, where, uh, you know, our, our salaries are quite not competitive, uh, when it's, when we compare it to global standards, uh, a lot of families are overburdened, especially if, if you, if you come from a family, uh, with a lot of children, right? Or maybe parents lose their job. It's, it's really a, a big problem. Also, um, the background of the family or the society or the environment where you find yourself also sorts of, and this, this links up with the, the last point, which is the mindset, because sometimes if you look at your background, you realize, oh, um, your family members or the people in your society don't really push themselves. And so you don't have the interest at all to, to really push yourself to the next limit. And I think that you really need to overlook this, right? There are some people uh, in your families that are no, you know, college degree holders. There are no, uh, uh, how do you call it, master's degree holders. There are no PhD degree holders. You should constantly tell yourself you need to push yourself beyond the limits. Or what you want to do is you want to tell yourself that I want to be the first person in my family to say to get a, a university degree or a tertiary degree. I want to be the first person in my family to attain a master's degree or a PhD or a professional uh, certification, etc. Another factor is our failing systems. And uh, I think this has been highlighted in the previous talk where you think that everything around you doesn't work. Uh, we, we constantly find ourselves in a situation where people have gone to school and all of that and, you know, we are still struggling to make ends meet. So these and a lot more reasons are why uh, people are limited in, in pursuing their education to the next level. And I have already said that you should always seek to push high and pursue higher education wherever possible. So it could be in a tertiary level and tertiary level I am referring to um, you know, education uh, beyond the secondary school level. So in Ghana, it's the senior high school, um, S SHS, right? Senior high school level, yeah. So always push yourself to get a tertiary degree. Um, it's very, very key. And it is important to know that education is a tool. Um, it is a tool that can be used to unlock so many doors unlock so many doors uh it's it's the opportunities that comes with education is is uh, limitless let me quickly rush through this uh, one of the things is career preparation so education can help you um to a certain path in your career maybe as as you're growing up you're confused you have um multiple passions and you do not know which specific ones to uh, you know pursue and i'm sure as you go through your, your education ladder or your academic ladder uh, things become much more relevant to you right so for example when growing up you you, you felt like you'd like to play with um uh, electrical gadgets you, you like video games you know uh, and you're more interested in that, you're more interested in IT things. And then naturally it, it gives you an inclination to want to pursue courses that are more IT related, right? And, and, and these are dispensation coding, you know, software, uh, development is a great skill, great, uh, opportunity to, to, to have. So it enables you to gain uh, knowledge, skills, and training for the profession that you you uh, you wish to pursue. 
the reason, one major reason why we also need to pursue our education to the next level is um, you have a better job prospect. And, and because also you, you get well paid, right? If, if you have a better degree, if you have a higher degree, I mean, this is not guaranteed, but averagely, um, mm -hmm. people who have higher degrees or, yeah, who have pursued education to the highest level tend to be on the average among the top earners in the society. I try looking for, um, this information uh, in Ghana, but I couldn't find any statistics. So I resorted to the Bureau of Labor Statistics in the U.S. And they compared uh, average salaries of, or, or the median weekly salaries of, of, of uh, different level of um, peop, uh, education ladders, right? So high school diplomas, <laughs> weekly earnings of $630, high school graduates, $789. And people who have a bachelor degree um, having a, over $1,000. So this goes to emphasize that when you pursue your education to the highest level, at least in terms of um, your economic output, you are well to do. And also education helps with your personal development as you seek the path toward knowledge acquisition, you develop your critical thinking skills, your analytical skills, right? Which is very, very important. Your communication skills, right? As you read uh, uh, information, as you immerse yourself in education, you, you, you're able to build your communication skills. And also I've said that it helps you to realize your passions, right? So as you learn, um, there are things that you, you feel comfortable with, there are things you don't feel comfortable with, there are things that you feel you there are areas where you feel you you there is a, a general interest for you to gain more knowledge and then it helps you to toe that line also education should help you to be competitive globally um and especially when you seek knowledge beyond especially the first degree level um it enables you to acquire skills um these days, knowledge, knowledge is everywhere, right? What is, what is taught in the United States could equally be taught in Ghana. What is taught in the UK could equally be taught in Ghana. So though you may not have, um, traveled or be physically present in such places because of education, you're able to understand, um, how things work. You're able to understand the international best practices in the profession that you find yourself. Good. So let me move on to navigating career fellowships. Um, so this is a situation where you, you find yourself as, um, a career professional or so you're working in a company, you are, you are an employed, uh, person, maybe working in, in, in a firm, in a bank, uh, wherever you find yourself. You need to push yourself beyond the limit. And number one, you have to be self-driven. Because if you don't tell yourself you want to really push to the next level, I don't think it's going to work. It has to come from within you, right? Within you have to, your intentions and your, your, your ambitions have to be great. You have to, you have to be determined that you need to push yourself to the next level. Because I know people who um, get employed and, and that's it, right? Uh, they, they are scared to go, uh, to, to, to take even leadership positions in, in, in the workplace. Okay. So what you can do with career fellowships is number one, you have to, it has to be, you have to be self-driven. It has to come from your core. And then, you need to look at your schedule, um, your work schedule and find courses that you can integrate around your schedule so that it is, um, balanced. It doesn't, um, downplay, um, the efforts that you put in your job. And that is really, really important that you are working in the bank. For example, and I know bankers have a lot of, um, 
busy schedules, right? So we need to take courses. And these days there are courses that are um, uh, offered on sandwich basis, um, weekend basis, etc. So find one which um, suits your schedule and then you can integrate it. And number three, explore opportunities with your employer. And this is very key. Um, I think when people get employed, uh, most of the time for well-established institutions, these things are really not um, uh, known from, a, from the first instance, right? That some of these well-established um, institutions have opportunities for higher, you know, learning, okay? So, and usually what happens is that they, they are able to, for example, you have a first degree and you want to do a master's degree or a professional uh, course, some of these employers are able to sponsor your education. The only um, condition would be for you to um, serve, maybe to, 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 to serve a bond, right? So for example, they can say, okay, we're going to pay for your two-year master's, but uh, you have to make sure that within the next three years, within the next five years, you do not tender in your resignation. And for me, I think it's really cool because you are working at the same time getting paid, right? And then you are, uh, your, your education is also sponsored by your employer. Then number three, number, the next one is um, explore opportunities with professional associations. So there are a lot of opportunities around. You just need to be, to, to be in a position to look for the opportunities. So you could, for example, the nature of your work, maybe you're in the insurance, um, life insurance industry or uh, accountants, right? Um, uh, chartered accountancy, there are opportunities in, and I know these um, careers have professional associations, right? Professional bodies. And so once you're a member of these associations, you have to, explore the opportunities that they have. And that is very important that in the career that you, you find yourself, try and, and, and connect, build networks with associations that are recognized. All right. And then there are free, um, free online courses that you can take, but I, I think I will highlight more of these um, in, this, in the latter slides. Now we want to go to navigating academic fellowships. And I think this is very, very important. And when it comes to academic fellowships, we have um, local fellowships and then international uh, fellowships. Now, the requirements for good local fellowships and international fellowships these days, I mean, they are almost the same. You just need to gather the necessary requirements that is needed to be able to 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 go beyond and 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 be able to win uh, one of these scholarships so let me briefly highlight the local fellowships um these are a few institutions in ghana i think i cannot complete this talk without mentioning these get fund um and then the scholarship secretariat right i think these places a lot of people don't don't usually visit um either their websites or their offices to find out the opportunities that are there there are a, a whole lot of scholarships uh, that come through um get fund that come through um the scholarship secretariat and i think that um for usually for scholarship secretariat a lot of the the countries that ghana has bilateral relationship with right um try to promote education uh people promote the youth to pursue the education to the next level and so they have scholarship opportunities where they they, they link up with the scholarship secretariat and so the scholarship secretariat basically gives you the platform for people to apply to these scholarships through their platform. So they more or less like um, screen applications and, and then uh, process it for the respective countries. 
I know there are a whole lot of hula balloons about these get fund uh, scholarships or um, scholarships from the, the secretariat. Uh, people say it's, you know, you need to belong to a certain political party. Um, I mean, in as much as this could be true or not, I think that what you need to do is to to know what you want, right? Go there, see the opportunities there. If you want, if you're interested and it's fascinating for you, just go ahead, give it a try because there's no harm in uh, trying. Trying and failing is better than not attempting at all. So please visit the, the websites of these institutions or you can equally, uh, I don't know the COVID situation currently, if it's possible to, to visit the offices because for example i know uh like the scholarship secretariat sometimes they display the scholarships on their notice box right and you go onto their website and you do not find these scholarships i really don't know why this happens but then uh it happens right so sometimes it's good to pay them a visit quickly if you go to other institutions like University of Ghana, Ashesi, KNUST, etc. Uh, they have scholarship opportunities um, for people who are unable to to afford the education, and it is key. All right. So if you're a current student uh, in in a tertiary institution in Ghana and you have challenges, you know, financing yourself, I would advise that. Uh, go to the students' uh, support offices, ask them about the scholarship opportunities that they have, all right? And then uh, I think you may probably find something that you can apply. Um, then other corporate institutions like the MTN Ghana Foundation are really doing an incredible job. Uh, Vodafone, GNPC, uh, this seems like I'm really uh, marketing uh, these organizations but i think that what they have done um in the past um is, is worthy of emulation by other institutions and so i would really uh yeah give them a tap on their on their shoulder and also i must mention uh, an institution like uh, talo uh talo oil right i i remember i had a scholarship with talo uh some years back i think currently the the sponsor uh some they have some postgraduate scholarships within ghana and some tertiary scholarships within ghana so please visit websites of these institutions and find out uh the opportunities that they have um over there and then you can subscribe to it now i've listed a few international uh fellowships here uh, i'm not going to go into details but I'm going to talk about how to position yourself to winning this scholarship, either uh, local scholarship or international scholarship. Um, so we have the Commonwealth Shared Scholarships. I think most people probably have heard of it. Fulbright uh, um, scholarships, uh, usually in the, in the United States. And then this DART scholarships yeah, is the German scholarships, and it's really good. Um, so what you need to do is just just Google these institutions, right? These are well-established institutions that offer scholarships. Google them, go to their websites, read opportunities that are displayed there, read their requirements, and see if you stand a chance. I think the quota scholarship is uh, is a Norwegian scholarship, which is also really generous. They give really good stipends, welcome trust, children, uh, et cetera, et cetera. So there are a host of them. I, I cannot list, I cannot exhaust this list. There are a host of them. You need to find out, you need to seek and, 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 and you will find. Now, um, so like I mentioned, Either it's a local fellowship or uh, it's an international fellowship. Um, you could pursue this fellowship either in your home country, in Ghana or wherever you find yourself, or it could be a fellowship that you need to um, travel abroad to, to pursue. And also it could be partially funded or fully funded. 
So in seeking for scholarships, you need to know what you want. Okay, do you want a fully funded scholarship or do you want a partially funded scholarship? Do you want to study in Ghana or do you want to study abroad? So you need to know the dynamics and that should um, help you in, in channeling your energies towards where you want to channel. And usually the packages that comes with um, um, these fellowships are um, depending on whether it is fully funded or partially funded, funded sorry, uh, you get a, a stipend. So a stipend is a monthly um, allowance that you get as a student, right? So if you, are, if you are working, it's like a salary that is supposed to enable you, um, you know, survive as a student, your, your living costs. Uh, if, you're, if you're studying abroad, this stipend is supposed to be able to help you. Um, if, if you're not given an accommodation, it's supposed to help you also uh, finish your accommodation. Also, you know, some of these packages include uh, your travel tickets, right? So there are some scholarships that are the really fully funded ones. If it's an international one, they will pay for you to travel uh, to the country and then back. And I must mention that even sometimes for the local fellowship, for example, if you're studying, if you have a scholarship in Ghana, sometimes there are periods or segments within the scholarship uh, period that may require you to travel to um, to to the the country from where the fund is coming from. So, for example, World Bank could have a scholarship in in Ghana, maybe at the University of Ghana. World Bank has uh, maybe at the Department of Economics, um, maybe they have 10 scholarships for master's degree, right? And it's maybe for two years. And out of the two years, the requirement will be that uh, you should have, you should pursue six months uh, of this scholarship outside of Ghana, maybe to a World Bank um, uh, institution abroad. So it could be intertwined this way, right? That you have a local fellowship and then you can pursue it abroad. And also they can pay your health insurance um, and also your accommodation, which I've already mentioned. And most importantly, your tuition, which is very, very important. <clears throat> now, the reason why people would prefer an international fellowship is um, traveling opportunities. Uh, and I must say, in, in my in my situation, the first scholarship that I okay, it's not the it's not the first scholarship, okay, because I before traveling to to the United Kingdom, I had actually scholarships in Ghana that I used to study. So people want to travel, people want international fellowships because they want to travel abroad, and I think it's a good experience. Um, good remuneration. I've mentioned the stipends, right? So. Uh, the stipends that you get outside, everyone knows that uh, it's, it's most of the time it, it is good, right? When you when you pair it up with a CD, right? It's it's usually good. You, know, you can save some money from there. Uh, most importantly, the quality and style of education. Um, you you get to experience a different um, dynamic to um, uh, education educating educating yourself, right? Uh, the terrain is different, the approach and the style is different, right? How we learn in Ghana is totally different from how we learn uh, abroad or, or wherever. Um, for me, one of the reasons why I also wanted to, to seek international fellowship um, some time back was to experience different cultures. I wanted to live with people from different backgrounds. I wanted to see how people think and and how what their mindsets are towards certain things in life, all right? And what, what that was one of the main reasons that motivated me. Um, another reason is career opportunities. Uh, that as you seek international fellowship, uh, people say that your when you have an international degree or a certificate from an international institution, you become more marketable. Uh, you, 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 your, your prospects, you know, are huge. And that is really good. 
and also um, building global networks. Building global networks is very key. Uh, from my previous scholarships that I had uh, till now, I still am in touch with very key people that I think uh, are important for uh, my life. And I'm always in touch once in a while, I get in touch with them. I send them an email, they respond, and it's really good, healthy global connections. Okay. So navigating academic fellowships. One very important thing I must highlight is that academic fellowships or scholarships are really competitive really really competitive whether it's a local scholarship or international scholarship it's really really competitive and before you decide to to you know apply for a fellowship you must make sure that you position yourself uh on the right track number one and and um have all the resources all the advantages to yourself so if you look at this this um photo you see people on the track right it's a competition uh if you look at the one on on the starting line right he has his suit on everything right and he's just at the starting line and all the people are, are gone he doesn't seem to have um his his uh briefcase or his documents with him if you look at the person right after him he seems to have his briefcase he is second from the last he doesn't have a suit on the third person doesn't have a, a briefcase right he doesn't have a suit case he has a tie on but not dressed well but if you look at the first person <laughs> He has his suitcase, his briefcase, sorry. He has his suit well dressed and he's still in the lead. So it tells us that these fellowships are really competitive and you must fulfill all the requirements uh, that is necessary to be able to win one of them. And what are some of the things you can you can do? Um when you want to apply for scholarships. Um, a few things here. Uh, some people want international scholarships yet they don't have a passport. <laughs> and it's, it's very uh, important, right? So if you want to travel abroad, I mean, this one, you don't need a, a prophet to tell you that you need to do your passport. It's very key. It's an international recognized traveling document. It's very important. So that is number one. There are things, uh, you may have your, your first degree, for example, in Ghana. Okay. So your transcripts and certificates, uh, are very important. Uh, maybe also even from your high school, uh, if you've completed senior high school, your certificates are really important. Um, and you need to, you need to be in the top in the top you know uh, performance in your class uh, because a lot of these scholarships during the screening process um uh, they use all these things as as barriers right to screen to screen down the numbers until they eventually find the right uh, candidates uh, that they like so you must aim for a first class if possible you must aim for a first class. Second upper is good. Second lower is good. That does not mean that if you even have a third class, you cannot win the scholarship. It all depends. There are other factors that play out, right? So your transcripts and certificates are very important, which means that you need to commit yourself. If you're a current student, you need to, and, and you find yourself that you are not performing, you really need to up your game. The other thing is your personal statement, which is very important. A lot of um, scholarship organizations uh, look at your personal statement, which basically talks about who you are, your motivation, your ambition, and uh, briefly about your experience and 
what you wish to uh, achieve with the scholarship that you are you are uh, applying to. Um, there are a whole lot of resources on online available online when it comes to personal statements. Uh, what I can do is that for people who are interested, uh, if you find a scholarship opportunity and you are interested in uh, some of us, you know, proofreading your personal statements, um, I think we would have the, uh, the time to be able to do, to help some of you with these so that you can really have a really uh, a good personal statement, a competitive uh, personal statement. Because some of these uh, institutions or um, funding uh, organizations, what they do is they read through the personal statements, those that are not convinced, and, and then they trash them. The other thing is your CV. Now, I've written here that you should have an ac accomplishment CV. So your CV should be measurable, right? It is not just there for information purposes. It should be measurable. Uh, the things that you do, your, your experience, right? Maybe if you, your, your, um, you are a, a career professional, you've worked in an organization. What are the successes that you have attained? Maybe you are part of a department, you are part of a team. What has been your contribution to the success of the department? Um, you need to list these things so that when they look at your CV, it measures your success, right? And it's not just there that you are um, a oh, financial director or you are uh, operations officer. No, it has to be measurable. Also, one important thing is your referee or the recommendations that you get when applying for uh, international fellowships. Mm -hmm. It's very, very important. Um, Okay, so my, my time is really running and I need to rush. Uh, so I must point out that a lot of students usually take for granted uh, lecturer relationship. And you must understand that this is very key when applying for uh, international fellowships or scholarships in general, right? That you should uh, network with some lecturers of yours and be able to, you know, um, uh, build a relationship with them such that even after after school, they can write a really good recommendation uh, for you. Other things include um, the language certificate. So depending on the country where you are traveling to, um, I think, please, am I being heard? MC Kelvin, am I still being heard? Okay. Yes, we are yeah, here. We are here. Oh, yeah. Okay, great. So, depending on the country where you are, you wish to study, uh, you have um, certain language certificates that you need to obtain. So, I'll quickly rush down. Uh, so, the strategy is that number one is your interest, which I've already highlighted. You need to know what you want, right? Then number two, you need to look at the institution that you are applying to, right? Look at the courses, projects. If it's in line with what you, you want to pursue, then go for it. Um, and most importantly, you need to look at the eligibility requirements, right? Um, uh, and, and study what is, is, has been written there in detail. Sometimes you find scholarship information flying across social media and your, you think, but you really need to dig deeper because some of the scholarships are not exclude maybe us because of maybe your geographical locations, right? So maybe some scholarships are designated for maybe Europeans or Americans or, so you need to look at scholarships that you can apply as a Ghanaian or wherever you find yourself. Um, the key is to apply, apply, apply. Never stop applying. Uh, if you look at the requirements and you think you stand a chance, just prepare your application suit and apply because you cast your bread on, on the waters and definitely one of them would come towards you. Um, 
I'll quickly rush and end so that we can have more time to engage in question and answers. Um, so a few resources here for career professionals or even current students. I would highlight uh, there are a lot of online resources, right? Like the EDX, uh, the Coursera and the Udemy, really great um, courses. A lot of them are free uh, courses, online courses. And as uh, Dr. Charles said, this COVID has COVID situation that has come has really pushed us to the limits, right? And now people are embracing the idea of online um, or, or, or long distance uh, uh, um, education. So these, uh, there are a host of others, right? But for me, I, I like these three: EDX, Coursera, Udemy have a to have tons of. Uh, courses that you can participate in and i think when it comes some of them offer really good uh, certificates that you can you can get at, as well uh, i think dr charles already talked about the mandela washington fellowship is really uh, a great um uh, platform to encourage african leaders right about 1000 slots alone for sub-saharan africa and i would encourage people to to look at this it's very important um these are a few uh websites that provide information uh, what they usually do is they glean they glean scholarships from uh you know different institutions and then they put them on their website and so when you go there you find tons of scholarships but what I'm, i must advocate is that when you go onto these websites always validate by if for example you go to say uh find a phd.com or find a masters.com and you see a, a particular scholarship say uh, at the university of uh manchester then what you need to do as a student is to go to university of manchester and validate and see whether that scholarship is really available and then you can apply through that portal so you have to do your homework uh also for People who are currently students, uh, you should visit the international program office of your institution. It is very, very important. Some of you don't know that these international program office have even exchange programs, right? Some of the exchange programs are two months. Some of them are half a year. Some of them are full years that you can subscribe to these uh, fellowships and pursue. And one also important uh, resource I would recommend is foreign uh, embassies they have a lot of fellowships right so just look at the the, the embassies around in ghana right uh, and and visit them visit their website some of them because they are located in ghana they have scholarships that they want to give to ghanaians and so it it even you know gives you uh, uh, a better coverage in terms of uh, the competitiveness and also you can visit specific universities that you are interested in, in pursuing i found this uh and i thought i i should share uh, it's a scholarship with a french um embassy for Ghanaian students and so you see that this is really well tailored uh to for Ghanaians. and so of course the competition uh, is is not as much as if you know other um people from other nationalities are also involved what i would do now is i would i would pause and then let's take questions and answers because the the whole process of scholarship application is a lot more practical right so uh, i would like to take questions if that is okay um uh, mr all Kelly. right okay such an awesome presentation and uh, thank you so much for that presentation because of time the slides will be sent to us uh, maximum two days after um, today's event so we are going to get it yeah so we have quite a number of questions in the box if you are you also want to communicate or talk about um, ask your question we'll give you the opportunity after we read this ones so mr fred is going to give you access to be able to unmute your microphone all right, the first question is from Musa Wahab. He says that, so do you subscribe to the fact that 
when you have an international certificate, your opportunities are higher as compared to the local ones? I mean, for me, clearly, um, it, it is either there or not, right? Um, the fact of the matter is that, fine, like I said, international certificates gives you some exposure, right? It is great. But at the end of the day, your experience also counts. So the deciding factor could be the experience that you've had or your background. Okay. And the internet, and, and what is, what is good is that with the international exposure, uh, with the international certificate, sorry, um, it, it makes you competitive when you are applying for a job position outside or something, right? I had a friend, uh, who, I mean, I was in the same university in Ghana with him, and then he, he, he took an international course, right? And then he applied to uh, um, this international company, TransferWise. And he was taken because he had an international certificate, and that, that took him out of one barrier, right? That his local certificate probably might not have, have given him the edge, all right? And, and and because he was given that opportunity, he had to travel abroad to go and work as an expatriate. And through that, he eventually got a job with Microsoft, right? So it depends on, on where you think you want to apply your, your certificate. But certainly, uh, it give, the exposure is great, but your experience also counts. All right. Thank you so much. The next question from Infinite Hot X. It says that, uh, my question is that, what do you do if your institution of work um, uh, does not allow you to uh, a steady leave due to inadequate human resources as your area of special? Can you, the last bit of your question, the, of the question, can you? Yeah, it says that um, what do you do if your institution doesn't allow you steady leave because of your speciality um, at the workplace? Okay, I mean, what I can say is that you just need to look at the best alternative uh, available to you. And like I've pointed out, if you really want to immerse yourself in a type of education where you don't want any... Um, disturbance with your work then it means that you want to take that bold decision and and quit but then i've highlighted the fact that there are online um there's online you know education right so you can just need to find a strategy around it you can if the company needs you you can work but at the same time you find time to enroll on an online course and i think this this should work All right, that's awesome. Okay, so the next question is from say You see that I want to know some scholarship, but I want to, uh, I know some scholarship uh, bodies ask for money to put you on board. A friend once told me about the scholarship secretariat for such. Um, it is still worth pursuing. Is it still worth pursuing such scholarship? Comparing the fact that what the what they must give you in return would be more than what you give. Um, okay, so first of all, the word scholarship, what does it mean, right? It's a scholarship. Whether it's, that is why I explained in the beginning that it's either a partial scholarship or a fully funded. If it's fully funded, a partial ones mean maybe they pay your, your, your tuition, right? And maybe you have to take care of your, your living costs. Full means full. And you must understand that there are scammers around every place. There are scammers in town. They want to take advantage of free things just to uh, dupe people. Okay. But I, I really doubt that an institution like the scholarship secretariat would, uh, maybe it's being done on, on the blind side of, of, uh, the people in authority. But then, once it's full, fully sponsored, it's fully sponsored um, uh, fellowship. For me, all the fellowships that I've won, by the grace of God, I never had to pay. 
I did I never even paid one Ghana CD. Yeah. Okay, that's awesome. Another question from Musa Wahab is that great to hear about personal statements. I was reviewing the requirement for a scholarship and they are asking for a study plan. Please, is there two? Um, uh, is there a difference between the two? Scholarship, uh, the personal statement you are talking about and then the study plan. Yeah, th there's a huge difference. So the personal statements or motivation now, um, letter of motivation, as I've, I've said, basically you talk about yourself, your ambitions and, and, and a few of your experience and why, uh, you are selecting that institution or why you are uh, selecting that particular scholarship to apply to, right? But the study plan, uh, could be more focused. For example, you are applying to a scholarship, say, in the UK to study uh, a master's degree in um, uh, maybe accounting or or in engineering, uh, whatever, right? So the study plan is more focused, detailing, um, and usually before you write out the study plan, you need to know the requirements of that course not the scholarship of the the course that you want to study right see the 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 aim of the course the objectives of, of the course and you write your study plan in accordance with that so it's really different from the personal statement that's awesome our time is fast right uh, but let's take two so that we can push the rest to um uh, after the section all right, this Kwame Abwadi says that my question is about the referee. How long can you use a reference letter you receive from a referee? In other words, does a reference letter expire? <laughs> this is a very, very important uh, point. Um, yes, I, I think it depends on, um, on the, the scholarship you are applying to, right? But ideally, um, usually what happens is that if you have a, a referee, for example, I had this professor who wrote my reference letter for me and uh, anytime I was applying to a scholarship, he would just go back and review it a bit based on maybe uh, updates that I've given him, right? That is why I said that you need to be in constant touch with your referees. It's very important. You, there are some reference letters maybe 10 years ago, five years ago, you cannot use them. So it's very important to keep a really good relationship with your referees so that at any time they can provide you real time, uh, recommendations that would support your, your, uh, scholarship. All right. Um, Wilson says that how simple should, how simple should a comprehensive personal statement be? <laughs> simple and comprehensive. So I, I think that to, to make it simple is to, uh, just as I mentioned in the CV, you should have, a, uh, uh, you should have a CV that measures success, right? And I think that that is the best way to describe uh, a simple motivation statement that it should be clear cut, not, not too much details and whining about clear and straight to, to the point. Yeah. If you right. need, if he needs help, I mean, I'm, I'm available to, to help in that regard. Yes. 